Mike Delicio from Solo Mode Games. Today I've got a special Kickstarter preview solo playthrough for Blight Chronicles, an Agent Decker game. This is a game that has a very strong story-driven element to it. And I do want to point out to you that before we actually head to the table and you see the beginnings of the setup of the game, when you play the game, you're going to have a mission book that you'll be reading from. And it's got a involved storyline to kind of set the stage for what it is you're going to be doing in whatever particular mission you might be taking on, taking on. And so I do want to point out that while I'm going to be focusing primarily on the mechanics of the game to kind of show you how the turn structure goes and how each round is going to play out, just know that for purposes of not trying to spoil too much, I'm going to leave most of the story elements out of it. Just be aware that there is a rich and robust story-driven element to this game. And while you're playing, you're going to be trying to follow along through this mission and complete these scenarios. And it can potentially branch in different directions depending on the choices you make at the end of each of the stages uh, on each particular mission. They're broken down by different stages and you can go in different directions and depending on which direction you choose, that could potentially change the way that next stage plays out. So, keeping that in mind, we're going to head on over to the table now and show you the basic structure of how this game works. Okay, here we have a partial setup for Blight Chronicles, Agent Decker. Just want to make a quick note at the beginning that these are all prototype components. There are likely going to be at least some little changes and Things may not be exactly uh, the way you'll see them when you get the uh, retail or Kickstarter box, but uh, you can get a pretty good idea of how things work through these uh, components. We've got our board here in the middle of the table, and uh, first thing we do is we choose a mission. In our case, we're going to be playing the Cloudless Sky mission, and we place this mission up here where it has a spot for the mission card. All right, and we place a little cube here on first stage. And what each stage is going to have uh, something that's particular to that stage. In this case, it just says that our starting hand size is four. So a full game is going to be a complete mission. So you would go through seven stages in this case to complete the Cloudless Sky game. Now, in this playthrough, we're just gonna be looking through, uh, playing through this first stage, uh, either to success or failure. And uh, if I can successfully complete it, then I'll, well, either way, actually, whether I'm successful or not, I'll explain what would happen if we were going on to the second stage. Because with this being a story-driven game, there are potential branches, story branches you can take that might change how uh, the next game is going to go, all right? So we've got that mission, and we're going to take the first stage card for that mission, which you'll see here, it says get in we've got to get in that's our uh kind of our first part of this mission is to get in and what we're trying to do is we're looking at the special setup here and it says that we're going to be placing a guardhouse card in the first mark and so really what we need to do is we need to get in that guardhouse and then uh jump over a fence so uh, i'll explain that as we go in but we'll basically we take this first stage card and we place it right here okay so I've got our first stage card there okay and now what we're gonna do is place a token on the zero spot of the suspicion track and our suspicion track is right here it goes up to 60 but at the bottom of this stage one card it says that a mission failure condition is a suspicion of 15 or more so for the purposes of this first stage if this marker ever gets beyond 16 or 15 then we have failed this stage so we don't want it to uh, ever get to that point so we've got it on the zero spot there we look here and it says starting visibility on the card it says starting visibility is one so what we're going to do is take a little meeple here and our visibility tracker is here it goes one two three and four and we're going to be starting at one so we go ahead and place that right there all right to create our obstacle deck which we have right here i've already done that uh, before starting the camera but really what you do is you've got a whole set of different types of cards 
that have different uh, symbols on them. And you look at the symbols in the top of the stage card. And so this deck is made up only of the cards with those symbols, all right? They have been shuffled together, randomized to make a obstacle deck there, all right? And so those are in that spot. I have eight starting cards that are shuffled and they're placed right here on the in the agent deck, all right? Um, I'm going to uh, look at this special setup. Here's the guardhouse card that was mentioned a moment ago for the uh, special setup. We've got our guardhouse here. This is gonna be placed in the first mark, okay? It says to place the guardhouse in the first mark, so that's gonna go right there. This is gonna be the way that we get an achievement token, all right? To be able to complete this stage successfully, the first thing we need to do is gain one achievement token, and then once we've done that, we have to discard up to six uh, physical and or evasion uh, strength to jump over the fence, and I'll explain that as we get going. But these tokens here are the achievement tokens, and so if I can eliminate this guardhouse, I will gain this marker that I can then place on my card, and then once I've done that to successfully complete this mission, uh, this stage, I should say, then I would have to discard up to six power physical and or evasion to do so. All right, and again, I'll explain that as we get going. So we have got our mission card set up. We've got our special before setup going on here by placing the guardhouse. We've got our randomized obstacle, obstacle deck, excuse me, and we've got our agent deck here. So my starting hand is four, so I'm going to draw four cards, one, two, three, and four. This is gonna be my starting hand. And we've got these four cards we're starting out with a nip up, a punch, a foot sweep, and an elbow strike, all right? So these are gonna be the cards that I use to get started. And I will start off here in a moment by just kind of explaining what the cards do, how they work, all right? First thing, up in the left here, you see a triangle, a red triangle with a two on it. This denotes a physical ability. So this has a strength of two in the physical ability and no other uh, special action because there's no text below that, okay? The foot sweep is similar in that it's a physical card, except it has a strength of one, but it has a special ability which in this case is discard one physical ability to gain two, all right? So this is gonna allow you to potentially get a, uh, a better card there, or a better strength, I should say. Here you've got Nip Up, which is a evasion, so it's got this kind of blue hexagon, all right? And this is something that will also allow you to prepare a card, which uh, I'll explain uh, as we get to it, because I'll potentially be playing this card at some point, okay? so. The main thing to know at this point, just to keep things simple, is that you've got evasion, which is in the blue hex, and you've got physical, which is in the red triangle, and there are different obstacles that are going to need one or both of those types of strengths to be able to successfully uh, encounter them. Uh, so we, we might be eliminating these cards, we might be knocking them out, and I'll explain the difference about that in just a moment, okay? So, I've got my starting hand, We've got our obstacle deck out there, and now what we need to do to get started is we are going to uh, deal cards from the top of the obstacle deck one by one into these slots, starting with slot one. Basically, these are gonna be obstacles that are closest to us, then getting further and further away. So the card that's in slot one is closer to our character than the card in slot five. The card in slot five is closer to our character than the card in slot six, okay? And so here in just a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and get started by placing all of these one by one because some cards might have a reveal action, and if they do, then I'm going to have to do something to account for that, all right? So here goes. Okay, it's time to start revealing cards. So the first card that comes out, I'm gonna use this as an example here, all right? These obstacle cards work a little bit differently. 
What we need to be focusing on at this point is what's at the bottom, okay? This says what type of obstacle it is. In this case, it's a surveillance camera. It has a particular symbol that says what type of a card it is uh, and what it takes to overcome this card. This says it needs a strength of four and you can see it has the blue hex overlaid with the red triangle. So this is telling us any combination of four, physical and or evasion will be able to be uh, needed to successfully uh, deal with this card. Now, you could do all physical, you can do all uh, evasion. However, if you wanna actually knock out, or excuse me, eliminate the card, which means that you're going to take it and put it into your discard pile, which you can then use later, you need to have at least one physical uh, strength. Uh, I'll just call it strength. You need to have at least one physical strength if you want to eliminate the card and take it into your deck eventually. If you want to just knock it out, which means flip it over, and I'll explain why you might want to do that in a moment, then uh, you can do it with all evasion. Now, out here at the bottom, it says reveal, okay? I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit of glare there. Okay, reveal. It says if there's another surveillance camera in sight, increase visibility by one. Well, luckily at this point, this is the first card that came that comes out, and so that will not trigger. If it did, uh, I would have to move my visibility up by one. The little two here is something that I'll explain when we get to it, but basically this is a suspicion value that if I have to uh, uh, deal with this card in, under the avoid part of the round, then uh, that's gonna be raising my suspicion and I don't want that because 15 and above means that I lose, okay? So I go ahead and I place this right here in slot one. The reveal doesn't trigger in this case because there's no other surveillance camera in sight. If another one happens to come out, then uh, that'll be something I have to deal with then. All right, here we go, slot number two. We've got a small crowbar. This does not have a reveal action. Actually, it's a car thief. It becomes a small, and that's something I should point out. When it comes out onto the obstacle row, this is what we're focusing on. It's a car thief that we need to worry about. It's got strength of five, either physical and or uh, evasion. However, if it ever comes into my hand, it then becomes a small crowbar that I can use for two physical strength and I could also potentially gain one physical strength to use against a card that has a door icon down here. This has a person icon. Okay, so you don't, you don't pay any attention to this when it's in the obstacle lineup. You're only focusing on the bottom part of the card when it's in the obstacle lineup, okay? Next card, this uh, does not have a reveal action. This is a locked ambulance with a physical strength of five, okay? All right, here we go. So we've got another surveillance camera, and this says if there's another surveillance camera in sight, increase visibility by one. Well, I should mention what in sight means. In sight is any of these cards that are here. So any of the marks, any of the cards in these six slots are in sight. So I have to increase my visibility by one. That goes to the two there, all right? Next, we've got a security guard with a mixed strength of four. And finally, we've got yet another surveillance camera. So we have three surveillance cameras we have to deal with. And so that means our visibility is now already up to three. If we get up to visibility four and we have to increase it again, we're gonna gain a suspicion. So we've got all kinds of cameras that we have to deal with. We're sneaking around, we're trying to evade these cameras, okay? And so now we're going to actually begin the round. And each round has five steps. The first step, and this is nicely laid out for you here on the uh, player board, is you play cards from your hand. You play them into the play area right here, okay? You can play as many cards as you like. You don't have to play any of your cards. You can keep cards from round to round, uh, but you are able to play as many cards as you like. You can even play cards that don't do anything just to get them out of your hand. Then what you're gonna do is reorganize, which is draw back up to your hand size. If you're already at or above your hand size, then you're not going to be drawing any cards. Then we're gonna to go to an avoid uh, part of the round, which is gonna be dealing with one or both of these mark cards. Then we're gonna move where these obstacle cards are gonna come closer, and then we're gonna reveal new obstacle cards. So here's what I've got looking at here. I've got 
a couple of things, a couple of ways I can go. The first thing I've got is this nip up card, which allows me, if I'd like, to prepare a card. When you prepare a card, you take up to X number of cards, and in this case it would be one, it says prepare one card, from the agent discard pile and place them on top of the agent deck. Well, I don't have any cards in my agent discard pile, so really this nip up is only going to be useful for me for the two evasion that it has up there. But that is helpful, all right? Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on taking care perhaps of, you can only deal with one card. You can only either eliminate or knock out one card during a turn. You can't do more than one unless there's a particular card that lets you do it as a different ability. So what I'm doing here is targeting a card. I can only target one card per round. Um, I am thinking, let's see, I've got potentially six mixed strength here. And so that car thief might be nice to get into my hand eventually. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do, all right? I'm going to play this, well, no, I'm gonna play this foot sweep, okay? The foot sweep has an ability where it says to discard one physical to gain two physical, all right? So I'm gonna play this into my player area then I'm gonna discard my punch, all right? That just gets discarded. And so now this is effectively a three physical strength because we have one from the base of the card and I've discarded one card to gain two more. So I've got three physical strength there. I'm gonna play this nip up, which is two uh, evasion. So that gives me a total of five, all right? And so now I can evaluate this car thief here. I can do one of two things. I can either eliminate it or knock it out. If I knock it out, what I do is just flip it over. If I eliminate it, I actually am going to take the card and put it into my discard pile. And then when my deck runs out, it gets shuffled back in in a deck building fashion. All right. So I've, cho I've chosen to e uh, eliminate that card because I'd like to get that into my deck eventually. I'm gonna keep this in my hand for the next uh, round, all right? And now uh, these cards, these played cards, are going to go back, go into my discard pile. I draw back up to my hand size, so I'm gonna draw up to four. I get a punch, I get a silent movement, and I get another silent movement, all right? And uh, then, what I have to do now is avoid, all right? When you avoid, you have to encounter one of the two cards in the first two slots. And the way that works is that if there is only one card, you have to deal with that one, which is gonna be the case here. Now, let's say for example, that I had chosen instead of eliminating this uh, car thief, if I had chosen to knock him out. The reason why I might wanna do that is now in the avoid phase, I could say, all right, well, I'm going to avoid this card. It's face down, it goes face down into the avoided obstacles pile and nothing else happens at that point. However, since I chose to eliminate it, it went into my discard pile and now I have to avoid this card. And what that means is that it's going to get moved into the avoided obstacles pile and I have to take two suspicion and add it to my total, which in this case is gonna take me two to suspicion, okay? So that's why you might choose to uh, knock out rather than eliminate. However, in this case, it was more important to me to get that card eventually into my deck, all right? So that is the avoid. Now we move, the obstacle cards move closer. All of these are gonna come closer. And now we're gonna go one by one and if there's any reveal, uh, triggers, then we're gonna do those. This is a surveillance station, okay? It does not have a reveal. And we've got a metal sensor gate, all right? Uh, that does not have a reveal action either, okay? All right, here we go for, and I'll go a little bit more quickly now uh, since I've kind of played out each of the structures of the round. Okay, here we go for the next round. Now, I do want to actually uh, point something out here that uh, I meant to mention uh, at the during the setup, 
and that is that this prototype board is missing uh, a couple of little pieces of iconography here. For these further away slots, they're a little bit farther away and so therefore they're harder for us to uh, kind of deal with. And so for slots three and four, in addition to the cost printed on the card, we have to add one extra e uh, evasion for slots three and four and two extra evasion for slots five and six. So in the case of slot three, this security guard, which shows a base of four here, and it could be either evasion or strength or a mixture of both, we're gonna have to actually have six because we have to have two more evasion as long as it's in that spot, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, I've got an elbow strike, which is a strength of two physical, a punch, with a, which is a strength of one physical, and two silent movement cards, which are a strength of one each of evasion. Now, they do have a, a uh, ability on it that says discard tension to lose two suspicion. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any tension cards in my hand, so I'm just going to be playing those as uh, straight evasion cards. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is this. Um, I'm a little concerned if I if I knock out this surveillance camera, I'll be able to eventually get it as a clear path for my deck, but that's going to take another two suspicion from this ambulance. The other thing I could do is um, play three of these cards, my elbow strike, my punch, and, well, actually I can save my punch. Yeah, I have options here. My, my thought is to perhaps knock this out so that then I can avoid that one and try to get um, more into my deck, better cards into my deck. Uh, to, to potentially build up because really what I'm trying to do is get a total of eight uh, of physical and evasion to be able to get this guardhouse because that's going to get me the achievement token that I need to then hopefully discard six to jump over the fence. All right. So let's see here. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll play my elbow strike, which is two physical. I'll play my punch, which is one more physical, and then I'll play one of my silent movements, which is going to give me four, combination of four. I will, this time, instead of eliminating, I will KO this surveillance camera, all right? These are going to go into my discard. I draw back up with the reorganize, so now this is my last card, all right? And I pretty much knew it was going to be a tension because the, uh, I hadn't had one yet. And so now these are going to get shuffled and I'm going to refill my hand. Now, every time that you reshuffle your agent deck, you do need to increase the uh, visibility by one. So unfortunately, uh, I am going to have to increase my visibility, which means that... Um, that's going to potentially give me more suspicion. So I'm shuffling my agent deck, excuse me, my discard pile. So now I at least have one better card in there. I'll put it here and I'll draw up to four. Got a foot sweep, got a nip up, okay. Um, and now we avoid. Now this card was uh, KO'd, so I'm going to keep that one face down, put it there, I don't have to add any suspicion. And now this is going to stay here. We're going to move these cards closer. And one more card is going to come out. This has, it's a taser drone, and unfortunately it has a reveal of discard one card at random. So I'm going to have to take my hand here. That's a real bummer. I'm going to just shuffle these up. I'm hoping I can keep my nip up and my tension in here because that will allow me to get back down to zero suspicion. This top card is the one I'm gonna pick. It's my silent movement. Unfortunately, that kind of messed me up there. Okay, well, um, let's see here. I think what I might wanna do is get this security guard uh, into my hand eventually to become an expandable baton. That takes a uh, strength of four. Um, hmm. 
This tension also has a uh, ability on it, gain two suspension to draw a card. That's a bit of a risk, but uh, it's intriguing. It is intriguing. I, you know what? I think I'm going to do that. All right, I'll go and play my tension first. I'll go ahead and gain two suspicion, draw a card, and I got an elbow strike. Okay. So that now has me at, let's see here. Yeah, I can take care of this locked uh, ambulance. All right. So, um, so I'll play the elbow strike and I'll play the foot sweep. I'm, uh, oh, no, that doesn't get me. It gets me enough for this. Maybe I want to hang on to this and do this. I keep changing my mind. Here's what I'm going to do. So this is going to give me a total of four. Okay, I'll play my nip up with the two evasion, my foot sweep, one strength or physical, and my attention with one physical. That's going to allow me to eliminate or KO. I'm going to eliminate the security guard. Okay. Um, however, unfortunately, by doing so, it has an eliminate action. I increase my visibility by one. Well, I'm already at the top, so I've got to increase my visibility by one, or my suspicion by one. So now I'm getting maybe a little bit too uh, hard and fast with that because uh, I'm going to be adding two more to that here in a moment. That's going to go into my discard. These cards are going to go into my discard. Okay. Uh, now I have to avoid this locked ambulance. It's going to add two to my suspicion. Unfortunately, that takes me up to seven suspicion. Uh, that's bad. I'm already more than halfway. Well, not quite. Uh, just a, just less than halfway to where uh, I could lose here. Okay. Draw back up to my hand size. Two, three, and four. All right. And now uh, I am going to... Um, oh, I did that backwards. I'm sorry. I was supposed to draw up to my hand size first. Then I avoided. Now I'm moving these closer. Uh, luckily, it didn't affect anything this time, but... I was out of order there. All right. Okay, this is a deep breath card. This has a threat marker on it, okay? And so let me uh, explain what the threat marker means. Okay, so threat cards are ones that are gonna have a particular trigger at the bottom. And in this case, this threat card, which is the surveillance operator, says when another camera icon card is avoided, increase your visibility by one. And so that's really rough for me because I've got uh, two cards in the mark areas that are both with that icon. And so things are not looking good already. Whenever you have a threat card, you want to take the threat marker and place it on top of the obstacle deck to kind of remind you. But I'm going to wait until I get this last card. This is a staff entrance. So I go ahead and place that threat marker there to remind me that um, I've got some issues to deal with here. <laughs> All right, so uh, I've done the look around phase uh, of the round, which is revealing new obstacle cards. And now I need to kind of look at where I'm at here. I'd love to be able to knock out this surveillance operator because um, then I wouldn't have to worry about that. But there's not much of a chance of that because he takes a combined power of six and then you'd have to add two more evasion here so you'd have up to eight and if i had that i would go ahead and do the guardhouse instead honestly and so i think what my best bet is here is to potentially knock out this surveillance camera and use that in the avoid phase um and the one thing I'm not positive about, honestly, and I may need to kind of consult the rule book on this, is that if I avoid the card that's face down, is that going to actually count towards this threat? Um, let's see here. I'm kind of taking a look. I may pause here in a moment when, when I get to that point, but let's just go ahead and play through up to that, to that point here. Um, let's see. Well... I've got a fair amount of strength here. 
This would be nice because if I eliminate this surveillance station, I get to decrease my visibility by one, and I think that's going to behoove me to do that. So I'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to play my elbow strike, my punch, my other punch. That gets me to four physical, and then my silent movement, which gets me to five total of mixed. That's going to be enough to uh, eliminate or KO the surveillance station. I'm going to eliminate it, okay, which is going to place it into my uh, deck, my discard pile actually, uh, for later will become an analyze surroundings if I can ever get it back. All right. I have eliminated it, so I decrease my visibility by one now. All right. And now I go to the avoid section. Well, I don't need to look this up in the rule book at this point because I know that I'm going to be dealing with this card. All right. This card has to be avoided. And so it is going to give me a, uh, Two more on my suspicion, gets me to nine, and because of the surveillance operator, uh, I avoided that, so I have to put my invisibility back down to four. So I saved myself one suspicion by doing that. Don't know if that was the best play or not, but that's really kind of the one that I, I, that I went with, okay? These uh, should be in the discard pile. Draw back up to my hand size. Well, I've got one here, so I gotta shuffle again which means that my visibility goes up again, which means that I'm at 10. Oof, looking, looking pretty dire, folks. Looking pretty dire at this point. We'll see. I'm not gone yet. Okay. Got my agent deck here. I'm gonna be drawing three more. Got the tension card. The foot sweep and the nip up. All right. This metal sensor gate is going to come here. The taser drone is going to come here. These slide down. Now we're going to reveal two new cards. This is another threat card. This reporting guard here is uh, basically when it, it says when another of this kind of shield symbol is avoided, you gain a suspicion. And we've got a metal sensor gate, all right? That has an eliminate action on it if I get to that point. Okay, well, let's see here. We've got, uh, we've got some work to do. Well, we can... I'm trying to see if I've got enough to take out the surveillance operator, but I don't have to worry about him at this point because I'm not avoiding. I do have to worry about this reporting guard because now these cards are going to be avoided and that's going to gain me another suspicion. And I really, really, really don't want that. But I don't know that I'm going to be able to take care of him because that would take eight. Six. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so here's what I can do. Here's what I can do. All right. I'm going to play this foot sweep, okay? It says discard one uh, physical uh, power to gain two. I'm going to discard this tension, all right? So now this is a total of three. I've got one from the base and two more there. I've got three. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Four, five, six, seven. It doesn't quite. I was thinking that was going to get me enough to go there, but it doesn't. So maybe I don't want to do that. I thought I had enough to get that guard house. I'm one short. Ah, I could gain two suspicion with this tension to draw a card. That's a huge risk. Let's do it. I think I'm already in trouble. I'm going to gain two suspicion. Get me to 12. Draw a card. See if this gives me enough. That is going to get me enough. Okay. So now, oh, no, I can't do that. Boy, I really botched that <laughs> because my idea was, um, to, to gain a card, to draw a card, but now I can't discard that card for my foot sweep. So that, was, uh, that wasn't great. So what I think I need to do is try to KO one of these cards and see, check the rules, see if that allows me to not get hit with this reporting guard. Um, but uh, yeah, let me get to that point. I'm gonna KO one of these. So I've got one, let's see. two, three, and four. 
these would let me prepare cards, but I don't have any cards in my discard pile to, to, to take advantage of that. So this is going to get me four. I'm going to um, KO, not eliminate, this risky, uh, excuse me, this metal sensor gate here. All right. Then I'm going to, um, these get discarded. I reorganize, I draw back up to my hand size. Oops. And then one of these is avoided. Now, I'm going to pause the camera here for a moment and kind of consult the rule book because my question is, this reporting guard here says that when another shield card is avoided, gain a suspicion. Well, I'm gonna be avoiding this card, which is technically a shield card, but it's face down. So I'm just not sure if I actually have to uh, do that. So let me see if I can find it in the rules and I'll be right back. Okay, so in consulting the rule book, I didn't see anything that specifically addressed this. I may have overlooked it, but I did not see it. So um, my inclination, and, and normally when there's a little bit of unsurety, or, and I'm not positive how to play something, I play it in such a way that it works against me. But my intuition is telling me that in this case, if the card is face down, that you're not going to be kind of using any of the symbology on it. And so just to kind of go over this avoid phase again, because I, I may have been a little bit unclear at the beginning. The way it works is that you've got two slots here, slot one, which is the one on the right, and slot two, which is the one on the left. And if there are cards that are in both slots, the card in slot one is avoided. All right. Um, that's how that's gonna work. If there are both, both cards face up and neither one of them have been either eliminated or knocked out, the one in, face, uh, the one in, in slot one is gonna be avoided, okay? If one card is face up and the other is face down, you get to choose which one is avoided. And so in this case, I'm gonna obviously be choosing the face down card. If there's only one card face up or face down and the other card is empty, then it's avoided, all right? When a card is avoided, if it's face down, it stays face down and goes on top of the avoided uh, obstacles pile. Uh, if it's face up, then you increase the suspicion by the amount that's on it. And so the fact that we're not going to be increasing suspicion also makes me think that I wouldn't get this suspicion here. I may be playing that wrong, and if I can find out, find out, excuse me, uh, afterwards, then maybe I can put a, a bit of a notation in the video. But uh, at this point. I'm gonna play it so that it goes here. I'm not going to uh, increase my suspicion, although potentially I should. I'm just not sure if that's the case, okay? And so now uh, we do the move action and all of these obstacle cards move closer. All right. We still have two threat cards in effect and we're gonna reveal one more. This has a security guard, excuse me, which has an eliminate action on it as well all right so now i'm in a, a real pickle here um, i've got a suspicion level of three here that if this card is avoided um, then that's going to trigger a loss for me um, but this will be the card that gets avoided if i if they're both face up and so what i'm kind of thinking here is this. Let's see if I have enough to do it this time. If I discard this, that's going to give me three, four, five, gets me at seven again. I'm, I'm, I'm so close to this eight, uh, just not quite there because this will give me three, four, five, six, seven. If this was a door symbol, then I could gain an extra one from this small crowbar, but it's not. So I just don't quite have enough there. I feel like I need to get some better cards in my hand, unfortunately. Um, but I can't go after this card because if I do, then that's going to leave this card to be avoided, which will end the game for me. I'd love to get this card in hand because this is actually a good time to point this out. This is an item card. You see the hand symbol there in the left, upper left. And when you eliminate this card, you can do one of a couple of things. You can either put it into your discard pile like normal, or you can immediately equip it, okay? And I've been kind of covering up this area with my hand just for the purposes of the camera, but you have two equip spots here 
for items and you've got a equip spot for a costume, okay? Uh, outfit, I believe it's called actually. And when you equip an outfit, you actually decrease your visibility by two. But this is an item, okay? And what this uh, particular item says is you can discard this play from, uh, uh, discard from play uh, at any point, which means you remove it from the game completely uh, to gain one physical strength. So for example, if I had had this card here equipped, I could have played these cards then discarded this taser to get me enough to get into the guardhouse. But that's not the case. Uh, it's not in my hand right now. All right. So um, just thought I'd point that out since I have a feeling I'm going to be losing before I even get to that point. So um, because, you know, I'd love to take that card uh, and put it into my hand or put it... You know, here, theoretically, honestly, this is an interesting idea. Um, no, I couldn't do that. I was thinking for a moment that I could then discard that to get me enough for the eight, but I wouldn't because I'd be spending most of my power for that. So let's go ahead and um, deal with this surveillance operator. I think what I'm going to do is eliminate him, and that's going to leave this taser drone to be avoided. Um, which is a shame because that's going to also gain me a suspicion, which I think is going to end the game for me. I think I'm pretty much out of luck here either way, unless I'm able to take him out. Because if I don't take him out, he's going to give me a suspicion when this gets avoided. Because he has a ability, a threat ability, when another... Uh, shield symbol is avoided, you gain a suspicion. So I'd get two suspicion there, plus one for that, even if I, so my only chance is to get rid of him. Uh, there's no way for me to do that because he takes six combined strength and then an extra one, well, let me take that back. I do have seven. Oh, but I need, I, one of those needs to be an evasion, so I don't. Because remember, you'd have one evasion, one evasion, two and two. If one of these gave me uh, an evasion, then I would be okay because then I'd have my two, four, six, seven. I'd have six plus one, which would be able to take care of him. But unfortunately, it needs to be an evasion and I don't have that. So I think I'm out of luck, but let's just go through the motion so you can kind of see how that works. Um, I want to make sure there's no... You have these sidestep abilities which is to avoid an obstacle from either slot one or slot two without gaining suspicion from it. But I don't see a way for me to, if there was something here that gave you a sidestep ability with elimination or anything, but there's not. And I don't have anything in my hand that allows me to, um, nothing in my hand that allows me to sidestep, unfortunately. So I think I am out of luck there. All right, well, Let's go ahead and just, like I said, play through this so you can kind of see it. I will go ahead and eliminate this surveillance officer. Two, four. We'll discard this to get this. So that's actually going to get me to seven. So I take this surveillance officer, operator, excuse me. He's going to get discarded. These cards are going to get discarded. Draw back up to my hand size, one. I'm just, like I said, going through this motion just to kind of show you what you would be doing. All right, four, okay. Now we're at the avoid phase, and so this is gonna have to get avoided. This is going to give me two suspicion, which gets me to 14. However, because of this reporting guard, whenever this is avoided, you gain one suspicion, that gets me up to 15. So, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, this was an unsuccessful first stage for me. All right, I, I couldn't get there. I couldn't even get into the guardhouse. Um, but uh, hopefully you got a pretty good idea on how uh, the game is played, uh, at least the very basics. Now, I do need to make a couple of things very clear. What we're seeing here, not only is it prototype uh, components, but it's also just the first three stages of this first mission, okay? Um, the game itself is going to have 
a whole lot more. There's going to be a whole a large number of missions, uh, all with multiple stages. Um, if you uh, if I had completed this first stage, then I would basically level up and I could then gain one of these level two cards and add that to my deck. There's a, uh, a process that you would go to uh, move on to that next stage. And basically it, it involves um, figuring out which cards are gonna be moving over. Your, um, you would basically read the story here, okay? And I don't wanna to give too many spoilers away, but there's a story at the beginning that kind of sets the stage, so to speak. Then you, if you complete the stage, you would read this story on the back and then you're going to get a couple of different options, okay? That's going to allow you to have different stages. So you can go from, from stage one to stage 2A or stage 2B and they both have different story introductions and different story scenarios that go along with it. So it's kind of a branching uh, story that would go on as you completed the game. Um, it has ways that you can save the game in between uh, you can customize your agent deck before the next stage. It has to start with a minimum of eight cards, but a maximum of 21. Um, you uh, are able to put in your uniforms. If you have a uniform uh, that you put in your customized deck, you actually have to start with it in play. Uh, if you've got tools, you can put them where you are. You have to keep your suspicion where it was at the end of the previous stage, so that's uh, obviously very, very challenging as well. So. Hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of how Blight Chronicles is played. It's uh, obviously got a, uh, a fair amount going on. There's a whole lot of story going on that I purposely really haven't been highlighting much because I would really uh, think you want to have most of that uh, that you'd be discovering for yourself, okay? So um, let's head boy from the table here and I'll just give you some of my final thoughts about this. So there you have Blight Chronicles, Agent Decker. Uh, a really intriguing game for a number of reasons. And as I mentioned in the introduction to the video, I was really purposely avoiding going into too much detail regarding the story elements of the game. Uh, but I hope it'll be clear to you through uh, the information that you'll see on the Kickstarter page or through information that you can find on Board Game Geek and elsewhere that this game really has a large element of story involved to it. It's a non-linear story. You can go in different directions and kind of see how things go. But it's it's not a storytelling game. It's just a game that has storytelling elements to it. Uh, the game itself is built off of a, a really solid kind of a deck building game with a lot of card management and uh, potentially uh, you can do some really clever combos. You certainly didn't see any of those in my playthrough. I was struggling. I was getting myself very close to being able to get in that guardhouse, but I'd find myself one point away and, and that kind of tension of being able to figure out how am I gonna get there? Because really, once you get that eight, that gives you an achievement token, but then you still have to get another six to be able to actually complete that stage. And if you do complete that stage, then you're moving on to the next and you don't have to, you, you know, you've got more suspicion that you've got to deal with. So uh, definitely gets a little bit challenging there, but uh, you'll be getting better and better cards into your deck to make those uh, obstacles more uh, viable, more realistic for you to, to, to complete. So um, what I like about the game is the, the pace. Now I was going, especially at the beginning, trying to explain things in a very deliberate manner, but when you're playing just on your own and you feel comfortable with the uh, round structure, it's a really snappy game. It goes very quickly with some uh, really agonizing choices on almost every turn because you can oftentimes play out, you might have those four or five cards depending in your hand and at any given time you might be able to play them out differently. Do I use this ability? Do I just use it for its pure strength or for its evasion? Or do I discard it to be able to trigger this other ability? Um, those types of decisions are constant throughout the game and I do like that. I, I, I like games where you've got um, your hand doesn't tell you what to do. Basically you've got options and you've got to utilize your cards to the best ability that you possibly can. I do like this feeling of having to deal with uh, 
different surveillance cameras and guards and how they're kind of tied into each other and you know it, it makes sense thematically that if you've got a surveillance operator around that's going to make those surveillance cameras more dangerous because there's somebody that's eyeing those that's keeping an eye on those and now it's harder for you to avoid them it's easy to avoid a camera if no one's watching it uh, i like those little details that kind of give you a little bit more of an immersion into the game uh, i i think that the difficulty is just right because um, while I felt towards the end that it was unlikely that I was going to be able to pull it off, it certainly never felt impossible until that last turn. Uh, I felt like if I had just gotten the right cards, if I had just played something a little bit differently, and I certainly did not play that uh, that uh, playthrough optimally at all, I could have done a lot of things differently that uh, likely would have gotten me a more successful result. But I feel like the difficulty is just right. Uh, you don't want it to be too easy, of course, uh, but you don't want it to feel like it's impossible and it's just random luck of the draw. Uh, I definitely don't feel like that's the case here. I also appreciate the fact that this is a game that is specifically designed for solitaire gamers. Uh, so often, you'll see a game that looks great and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I wish you could play this game solo. I think this is a game that people that don't normally play solo are going to look at and say, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I wish I could play that with my group. But maybe that's going to get them to take a look at things a little differently and say, well, you know, this game looks good enough. It's intriguing enough. Maybe I'll try this solo gaming thing. And let me tell you from someone uh, that can speak from experience, that can open up a whole new world for uh, these people. And, and I, I hope that games like this that are specifically designed for solo gamers that are not just small little card games, but big, immersive, meaty games with a lot of content will make it clear that there's a market out there and that this is a type of game that uh, more people should be looking into. So I appreciate that as well. Uh, I hope you got a pretty good idea on how the game is played. I hope you uh, can get a sense for whether this game might be of interest to you. I think it has a lot of things going for it. Uh, I can't wait to see everything that comes with it because what I got with this demo copy is just a tiny, tiny portion of what's going to come in the actual box when it comes to uh, backers. So uh, I thank you as always for your time and have a great day.